Alright guys, uh, this program that I've been making, it's basically a web app that uses FFmpeg, which if you didn't know what FFmpeg is, it is a video encoder that you use in the command line. Okay, well I'm going to use PHP to interface with FFmpeg to achieve, achieve a result. Basically, here is how this is going to work. Um, we have these high definition, and I'll, I'll pull this up, we have high definition videos on this website, and these high definition videos, okay, need to be playable on iPhone. Well, these videos are Flash, therefore they can't be played on iPhone. So I've made a downgrade for this that allows them to be played on iPhone. However, we need iPhone versions of the video files. We also need screenshots for the video player that we're going to use. So I've created a piece of code that, and I'm going to run it in a second here, it takes the MP4 file, has to be an MP4 file, I only made this for MP4 files, so I'll select one here, which is Sean.mp4, uh, MOV, MOV works too, MOV and MP4. And once I choose it, I'll hit submit, and it will create a screenshot of the movie, and a uh, and it will create a iPhone version of the movie in the folder of my choosing. And I'll show you that in just a second. It's almost done. If I actually, I can pull up the folder here where these are now showing up. Um, you can see four kilobytes, three point nine, four point one, four point two, four point three, four five, four six, and you can see. Uh, Quick Look is actually just keeping refreshing here, so it's getting more data in as it's encoding. Uh, in a second, it'll be done because it's only about six megs. There we go. So now it's done. Uh, so here is the output that my program gives me. It gives me all the output for the image, and you can see this is an image. This is see, this is an image from the video, and this is the output of the. Um, of the video conversion for the iPhone. So this this folder now has an iPhone version, which is this, which is playable on iPhone. And oops, that was not cool. And a image from the video. So let's look at how we did this. I'm not going to go through the FFmpeg settings too much because I'm going to do that when I show you how to install FFmpeg. First, um, let's start with the HTML. First, you have a form with an uh, ENC type, an encryption type, multi-data form, which is basically how you uh, pass a file. You have input type equals file, which gives us that choose file dialog. Then you have a submit button. Okay. Then you have two text areas that they check if a variable exists. If it is, then it puts it there. Very easy. And this checks if the image is there. If it is in PHP, then it is. The other thing that we're going to do is our um, action is going to be the same file. So we're going to we're going to um, process this on the exact same file. So here's how we do this. When this file loads, if the underscore files array is set, which means there's files that have been passed, okay, first variable we set is the path to my FFmpeg installation. Mine is slash users Sean FFmpeg, FFmpeg, FFmpeg. This is a folder I created, this is the folder they created, and this is the program. This is the Unix executable file, okay? Then uh, the underscore files file variable has a second part of the array which is temp name which is basically where on the server it has stored the image or sorry where it has stored the file in this case a movie so I'm just grabbing that that's going to be my temporary source then I get the file name using the uh, name using the name index now I'm going to get rid of the last four characters using a substring 0 to the string length of name minus 4, which is basically going to get me the name without the extension. That way I can add JPEG onto it. So now I'm going to store a local reference uh, located on the web root, starting from slash, which is the web root slash. Now my web root is not the same as my document root. My document root is where my FFmpeg is installed. My web root is where my uh, Apache is installed, and that is in my htdocs folder. This is my I'm in testing right now. This is my web root right here. Okay, this is not where FFmpeg is installed. That's why I have to point it to here. So that's going to be slash iPhone slash whatever the name is. Again, the name is minus the extension dot jpg. So if I actually look here, go to iPhone. Uh, here's that. Where is it? There it is. So this is the folder that I'm going to save it to. Okay. Now I'm going to get a reference to the same location. Okay, but 
from the document root because when FFmpeg runs, since FFmpeg is installed in the document root, it needs to know where the movie file is located. But in terms of the document, not in, in terms of your computer, not in terms of the web root. So that's going to be get current working directory, which um, if I'm here, the actual directory, see this is actually slash iPhone according to the web, but according to my computer, it's slash applications slash MAMP slash htdocs. That needs to be grabbed, and to do that, you do get CWD with PHP. Okay? Then you add on that local directory. So it's slash application slash MAMP slash htdocs slash iPhone slash blah 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 blah. Okay? Now FFmpeg cannot have spaces. It can, only, it can only have backslash space. So I'm replacing a space with a backslash space in uh, the source and the image to make sure FFmpeg is okay. Then, using shell exec, I'm going to execute my FFmpeg string, which is path to the FFmpeg file, uh, grabbing the frame 100, a still shot. SS still shot frame 100 um, dash i input file, which is the source. This will output the data to that. This will basically make it so I'm I'm piping my data out with this. Uh, dash s for size 500 by 290. Uh, dash f for codec or type, which would be image 2, which is fine. Dash v frames 1, meaning. Uh, if you if you just do dash ss 100, it'll grab every it'll grab the hundredth frame every second. So it'll keep changing, but dash v frames one means only grab one time that, and then output to the image directory that I had earlier. Next thing is I'm going to get the same document root reference, but uh, in the iPhone folder now with a .mp4 after it. That's going to be the final video. Okay. Then I'm going to execute a shell command for ffmpeg dash y for overwrite the file if it, oh, it's already there. The input file is the movie source. I'll put my data so I can read it. Dash s for size VGA, which is 640 by 480, which is good for iPhone. And then I'm going to store that to my iPhone um, to the, the file name, which was uh, whatever it is, .mp4. Now keep in mind there are a lot. There are a ton. Matter of fact, here's a whole page of all the settings you can have here. Okay. Keep in mind, the only reason I'm doing so little settings is because it's starting off as an already H.264, almost iPhone compatible. It's just too big. So all I have to do is resize it, but there's a ton you can do. All right? And then, uh, like I said, I'm showing that here. So now, with the program, uh, it, it'll execute, it'll create a screenshot, and it'll create an iPhone version for me. In the next tutorial, I'll show you how to actually get those iPhone videos on the iPhone, and I'll also show you how to install FFmpeg on Mac. Thanks for watching.